Let's begin with a moment of Zazen, seated meditation. Aloha, dear friends. My name is Jiko Nakade, and I am the resident minister at Daifukuji Soto Zen Buddhist Temple here on the island of Hawaii. Today, we are observing Bodhi Day, and we are in the midst of a very grave coronavirus pandemic. And yet we pause in the midst of what has been a very turbulent year to remember the Day of Enlightenment of the Buddha Shakyamuni. We just completed the eight mornings and evenings of the Rohatsu Seshin, during which Zazen meditation was offered via Zoom to participants at 6 a.m. and also again at 6 p.m. from December 1st through the 8th. It was a very meaningful Rohatsu Seshin for myself, and I appreciate all of you for sitting together, whether through Zoom or sitting at your homes or in your centers or zendos. Collectively, we honored and observed the enlightenment of the Buddha Shakyamuni. Every year during this time, of Bodhi Day, I think about the story of the Buddha's enlightenment, for it is a story rich in imagery and deep in wisdom. It is full of rich meaning. While sitting under the Bodhi tree, almost 2,600 years ago, the Bodhisattva Siddhartha Gautama vowed not to arise from his meditation until he had attained liberation from samsara, until he had, had attained the truth that he sought. During this time, the Buddha was assailed by a figure named Mara. Every year, I think about this story and I think also about this figure named Mara. Who was Mara? In Sanskrit and also in Pali, Mara liter literally means the maker of death. In any good story, there is a protagonist and an, and an antagonist. In the story of the Buddha's awakening, Mara is the Buddha's antagonist. He is regarded as the personification of evil. For he is the one who tried to prevent the Buddha, Siddhartha, from attaining enlightenment by distracting him 
and doing everything within his power to get the Buddha to give up his quest for truth, to get the Buddha, Siddhartha, to quit. According to the story of the Buddha's experience under the Bodhi tree, Mara appeared several times trying to break Prince Siddhartha's spirit, although he was no longer a prince, for he had given that all up and become a renunciate for the past six years, undergoing a severe training and um, mortification and of the flesh and practicing great austerities. When Mara was unable to break the Buddha's spirit, Siddhartha's spirit, he sent his army of minions to attack Siddhartha with arrows. Thousands of minions released flaming arrows, one after the other, that went flying through the air in the direction of Siddhartha. What did the Buddha-to-be do, this great Bodhisattva? He did not move, but he continued to sit in deep meditation, maintaining a noble silence. To Mara's dismay, the arrows, instead of piercing the Buddha's body, turned into flowers and fell harmlessly at the feet of the Buddha and around the Buddha. Enraged, Mara next sent his three daughters to seduce Siddhartha. These daughters' names were Rati, Arati, and Trishna, meaning delight, discontent, and craving. Do you know them? Do they appear in your lives? from time to time. Mara's three daughters danced around the Bodhisattva, doing everything they could to seduce him and distract him. But he remained unmoved in deep meditation, deep samadhi. Now even more enraged, Mara himself appeared before Siddhartha and questioned his right to occupy that seat under the Bodhi tree. Siddhartha declared that he had earned th that right to the accumulation of merit, have, having practiced virtuous deeds for many, many lifetimes. Mara challenged Siddhartha saying, was there anyone around who witnessed your virtuous deeds? At this moment, Siddhartha, the Bodhisattva, extended his right hand and he touched the earth, calling upon the earth goddess, Shravara, who vowed that she had witnessed the Bodhisattva's virtuous deeds lifetime after lifetime. Upon making this declaration, the earth goddess caused the earth to quake violently. There was a tremendous earthquake. All of Mara's minions and his dancing's daughters fled in terror. And Mara himself disappeared and vanished. Who is this Mara? the Buddha's antagonist. It's important that we get to know Mara because Mara appears in our lives as well. But is Mara a Buddhist demon as he is often called? I love the image of Siddhartha being attacked by flaming arrows, which turned into beautiful flowers and fell all around him. This image of Siddhartha sitting unmoved when attacked captures my imagination and my heart like no other. Today, I would like to talk about this part of the story. 
arrows turning into flowers. What a turbulent year we have had, not only due to the suffering caused by this coronavirus worldwide, but also by the division that has arisen in our country. When we look at how the leaders of our country have been behaving, and when we see how polarized our, our society has become, particularly, particularly in regard to politics, it is truly disheartening. Never before have we seen so much hatred, hostility, and anger born of fear. It seems that all across our country, so many people have their weapons loaded, their arrows ready to set a flame and fly. They see anyone with different views as the bad guy, the opponent, the enemy, and are ready to take them down. There is so much fear, so much mistrust, so much suffering as a result of this. Unfortunately, many people have allowed their hearts and minds to become fragmented and divided. They feel threatened. Deep down inside, perhaps they feel frightened. So they load their arrows ready to fight, ready to kill, ready to take down their opponent. Somehow, as human beings, we have let our tribal instincts take over. Tribal instincts that perhaps have lain dormant for a long time. It's become a society of my tribe versus your tribe. Do you see this happening? Do you see this happening perhaps in your own heart and mind as well? And is this who you would like to be? Is this the kind of society you would like to live in and have your children and grandchildren live in? For a while, it may feel comforting to have a tribe to belong to, but does it bring you happiness? Does it bring you peace knowing that you and the members of your tribe are trying to hurt others and take down others? Are your mind and body at peace? The image of Siddhartha, the Bodhisattva, sitting serenely and unmoved when attacked by Mara's minions is a very powerful one. It is powerful because it is the opposite of what we are seeing in our world today and the opposite of what we are experiencing. Not only does Siddhartha sit unmoved, not only does he not retaliate, not only does he try to vanquish the party that is trying to hurt him, he continues to sit with compassion, with serenity, and the fiery arrows shot in hatred are turned, transformed into beautiful flowers that fall harmlessly at his feet and harm no one, no living being. What we see in this story of the Buddha's enlightenment is the possibility of hatred being transformed into love, of ignorance being transformed into wisdom of violence being transformed into peace. 
The power of the Buddha lay in his ability to transform Mara in his first, in his own heart and mind into love and compassion. And then being able to teach this path of transformation and liberation to others. He showed us that transformation is possible even in the most difficult of circumstances. Arrows can turn into flowers. And sometimes it takes a very difficult situation, such as the situation we are in today, to awaken us, to awaken human beings, to awaken humankind, to help us realize that it is possible for all of us collectively to work toward creating a society based on the values of compassion and peace. Mara is not a demon outside ourselves. To me, Mara is the personification of our reaction to fear and insecurity, which left unchecked turns into anger, hatred, bitterness, and defensiveness, causing one to want to fight, to attack, to defeat another. Our practice is to become aware of Mara when Mara visits us. To see the, our own fear and anger arising within us or starting to arising, arise within ourselves. Through meditation, we are given some space, some spaciousness in our bodies, in our hearts, and in our minds to step back, to see what's happening, to look at the bigger picture, and to return home to the realization that all of life is interconnected. That the people who are trying to threaten us are our fellow human beings. And that the only path out of this difficult dilemma is the path of love and compassion. When we realize this, when we see this, our arrows turn into flowers. It is said that even after his enlightenment, Mara sometimes visited the awakened one, the Buddha. And what did the Buddha do on those occasions? It is said that he greeted Mara in a friendly way. Hello, Mara. So here you are again. Won't you come in and have a cup of tea with me? Would you like to have a cup of tea? In our practice, we look at the Mara parts of ourselves, our self-centeredness, our arrogance, our conceit, our desire to dominate, to conquer others in some way. And in the same way that Buddha befriended Mara, we befriend these parts of ourselves with compassion looking at the divisions that beset our society today, wouldn't be, it be nice if we could all sit down together and have a cup of tea? Would it be nice if we could step back and look at each other through fresh eyes and see not an enemy or opponent in front of us, 
but a fellow human being who just like ourselves is longing for love, beauty, happiness, and truth. Would it, it be nice if we can listen deeply to each other and regard different views that others have with interest and a spirit of equanimity and sit unmoving as the Buddha did almost 2,600 years when assaulted by Mara beneath the Bodhi tree. Our world would be a different sort of world, wouldn't it? Even within our own families, the interactions would be different. They would be kinder, calmer, gentler, more compassionate. After all that we've witnessed and suffered through this year, who does not wish to see arrows turn into flowers? Buddha's teachings show us how to do this. Please take care, dear friends. Thank you for joining our Bodhi Day service today. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be filled with loving kindness. Namu kie butsu. Namu kie ho. Namu kie so. Together, we take refuge in Buddha. We take refuge in Dharma. We take refuge in Sangha. Aloha, mahalo, and ahui ho.